Hello, I'm Entrilisium and welcome to Gratuitous Space Battles 2. So those of you who don't know Gratuitous Space Battles, you create ships and add modules and then you let them loose and they have massive fights and lots of explosions happen. Uh, so there's been recently an update that added a career kind of mode, like a campaign, and what happens is you take the same fleet from battle to battle to battle to see how far you can get. So if you lose a ship, it's gone and you don't get it in the next battle. And I thought this is like a really cool idea because normally in Creature Space Battles you'll come up against a foe, you'll beat a fleet that like specifically defeats that foe, but it's like a super specialized fleet. But because of the way that this changes from battle to battle, you can't really do the super specialized fleet thing anymore, you kind of actually have to do like a whole menagerie, like you have to have ships that can do one thing, that can also do another. I really like the idea, so I think it's a good idea to dive in and have a go at this. So I've designed all my ships already, and I'm briefly, like, really quickly going to take you through the ships. So we are playing as the Zikari or something. Yeah, so this is the Isaac class support frigate. It's got a, a tracking thing, it's got some shields, and it's got point defense, and it's got an anti-fighter missile. So this, like, puppy is going to basically sit nearby, um, like, any big capital ships like Dreadnoughts, and basically provide a little bit of point defense, you know, anti-fighter work. Its main job is just to sit nearby and just in case it gets attacked by fighters, just, you know, sit there and do its due diligence. Alright, so let's have a look at the other ones. Um, here we go. Zir Cruiser de Joker. Uh, let's open this. So this is the de Joker class missile cruiser. So uh, it has like a shield disruptor bomb, ECM like missiles. It's got uh, multiple, warhead missile, multiple warhead missile, multiple warhead missile, multiple warhead missile, multiple warhead missile. And, you know, a, a load of armor. A couple of lasers, just in case, and, you know, it goes okay in terms of speed. But the idea is this puppy is just going to be like, yeah, you've got no uh, missile defense? Sure, missiles away! And just spam missiles, right? The idea behind this craft is just spam missiles. Uh, it's got, you know, like a, a disruptor bomb to destroy the shields. It's got an ECM to, like, cripple the actual uh, ships themselves. And then, you know, it follows up with the rest. So it actually provides a kind of support aspect in that it can take down enemy shields, but it also can, like, you know, cripple their ships and prevent them, like, shooting back with ECM. In, in theory. Uh, let's have a look at the Steen class. Uh, the, right, the Steen class cloaking cruiser is designed to get up, like, close and have a little bit of a knife fight. Uh, but with lasers. Like, it's a knife fight with lasers, you know. So basically the idea is it's got like a cloaking device and I gave it like an okay-ish speed. The idea behind this ship is it like sprints to get really close while well cloaked. Then when it's close, it just unleashes a barrage of these like little lasers that don't like do a lot of damage in other themselves, but there's like loads of them and you're really close and the idea is they'll take them down. Now they aren't as good against shields, so I did include like a plasma sling, which is, you know, meant to be 100% effective against shields. They'll hopefully get their shield down and then they can like get pounded by these and destroyed. It's also got like an ECM shock beam, so you know, when you're close you're gonna get shot at a lot. So the idea is that this puppy will be able to be like, yeah, bzz, you're not attacking me while I shoot you dead, in theory. So this is the Steam class cloaking ship. If we go down again, force it. So the force it class is kinda of designed around I don't know what you'd say. I think it's more a just a a fighty class? cruiser? I mean, it's a it's a slightly lighter weight than some of the other cruisers, I think, in terms of its firepower. But it's got a couple of slings on front to take down shields, and a couple of beams here, and a beam there, and those are, like, good against armor and hull. So the idea is it just shoots things. It's got targeting ray, make it more accurate, and it's pretty standard in that regard. By the way, if you can hear building work, that's because the, like, flat directly below me is having, like, some apparently major masonry work being done, and I apologize profusely, but they're doing it, like, from 7 till late. So, I have no other choice. What was this one? The Fawcett class. Right, the one below the Fawcett class. The Jazza, a destroyer. Okay, so we're looking a bit lighter weight on this one. The the Jazza destroyer is basically designed around scrambling with the RTS thing. Uh, it's, it's a buff. Yeah, that's it. So it's got this little uh, projection ray at the front, which I think is the recon projector system, which increases the accuracy of, uh, you know, ships that it aims at, so it buffs the ship effectively. Uh, it's got a small targeting array, it's got this RTS thing which uh, scrambles incoming missiles, and it's got a point defense thing as well to actually shoot down missiles, etc. And the idea behind this craft is it's really, really weak. It has no shield. It will probably die fairly quickly, but the ability to like increase the accuracy of one craft, and if you pick like a dreadnought, that's a lot of like weapons that suddenly become a lot more accurate. 
And, you know, the ability to scare the missiles off from attacking that Dreadnought are really good. So, basically, each Dreadnought is gonna have a Jazza class, because you cannot, like, I cannot estimate, like, overemphasize how much having one, like, increase your accuracy weapon pointing at a Dreadnought, like, really helps that Dreadnought out. Lick Geek. Ah, oh, we're onto the Dreadnoughts now. Awesome. The Lick Geek class Dreadnought, which is a carrier sniper. Uh, it's got four reinforced carrier bays or whatever they're called. And then sniper weapons in every single little nook and cranny I could fit them in. Basically, the idea is because, like, the Lick, the, uh, the Lick Geek is going to be pretty far back and has a really, really slow speed, which is good. Um, the Lick Geek's basically going to sit there. Fighters need to refuel. They come back. And since it's sitting at the back, it might as well have its weapons be like snipers, which are like really, really far. I think they're like the third longest range. The other ones are like missiles. Um, so the idea, if anyone comes nearby, hopefully that amount of firepower will like destroy it. And it's got like an accuracy modifier thing from the target booster array. It's, you know, reasonably tough as well. An average armor of 20, reasonable shields. Basically, good carrier, but, you know, also does a bit of sniping in its spare time. Where am I? Uh, this one, the Socrates. I, I cannot, like, it doesn't say because the name's too long. I think it's Mayany? No, yes. The Mayany class, close. Right, so the Dreadnought is a Mayany class, and it's designed for getting, like, really close in and just sort of duking it out. Now, it doesn't actually have, like, a particularly short range, but I was just, like, trying to figure out something that's quite close range, but Dreadnought's all of kind of long range weapons. It's got a few, uh, plasma, I think they're plasma projectors, aren't they? Radioactive plasma launch, I think. Are they? Yeah! Okay, so Radioactive does like damage over time, and they're also like 100% against shields, and then the idea is that once it's used these forward firing ones, and these ones that have got like slight arc firing to the side as well, to take down enemy shields, it unleashes a broadside of beam weapons that are good against armor. So, shields, then armor, then hull, and you know, that should own them. And at the back it's also got like a combat tractor beam, so if anyone like frigates try to sneak around the back, it'll grab them, shake them apart, and damage them with that combat tractor beam. Also like holds them still, so they're easier to hit. It's uh, reasonably fast. I did chuck like three engines at the back to just make sure it can keep up with like some of the cruisers and possibly the slow destroyers. It's reasonably tough. I would have preferred like a bit more in the way of like armor and shields, but this is one of the smaller hulls for dreadnoughts. And at the end of the day, I was like, when it needs speed, it needs to be able to get you know to the enemy. It should be the front dreadnought to get there. Uh, the Sig class dreadnought. Okay, the Sig class dreadnought is designed around being a badass at firepower. It has a load of radioactive plasma launchers on the side, and some beams up the front. A couple of combat tractors on the front and back, so anyone getting close. Uh, it's got one carrier bay, just in case we lose the, uh, the, the actual, you know, dedicated carrier, we can actually then be like, cool, you can actually come here and get, like, you know, fuel and repair. Uh, in general, it's not a particularly fast craft, but it should be, you know, a kind of a heavyweight. Although that said, it's not as tough as, you know, I'd prefer. But it'll do. What else do we have? The Laser King Fighter. It's designed about one thing and one thing only. The Sniper Laser, which uh, is designed to actually defeat enemy fighters pretty accurately, do a lot of damage. Slow firing, but hey -oh. It's got a large uh, amount of fuel, and it's pretty nippy. Like, you know, I wanted the speed to be hopefully 2. I got it to 1.91, and I think that's, you know, quite acceptable. Let's load up. The Isaac class frigate. The Isaac class frigate is designed around a couple of things. Oh, we looked at this already, didn't we? Yeah, a fast missile and the all made point defense. Yeah, done that. Right, cool. Next one, the Mass Wu. The Mass Wu class is designed. Okay, this is the one craft that's probably just going to get massacred. Uh, the problem is, it's a frigate. Frigates tend to get massacred. It has two beams. It has a plasma thrower. It can fight most things. It's pretty nippy. I did intend to keep the speed reasonably high-ish to make sure that it doesn't get shot too much. Like, the speed actually means it makes it hard for people to target it. Um, and hopefully this will, you know, do as intended. But it's pretty weak. I mean, you look at the shield strength of 30. This thing is going to go down pretty quickly. The problem with the campaign is, like, because if you don't get destroyed, you go from, like, 1 HP up to 100 in the next battle. Like, your HP is fully replenished. You just lose the craft that gets destroyed. I think that it pays to be Dreadnoughts. I think that the Dreadnoughts are going to have an easier time and the Frigates are going to get murdered early on. We'll have to see though. So the Mass Wu is probably going to get mass slaughtered. Uh, the Patupi. The Patupi class anti-shield gunship. 
Alright, so the Batubi class has like a very important job. We have a Disruptor Bomb and an Anti-Shield Bomb. So basically the idea is that they go in, they take down the enemy shields, maybe, you know, scramble them a little bit, and then, you know, other craft kill them. They don't actually have a way of actually killing an enemy craft. They just have a way of crippling them and removing their shields. So the idea behind this craft is entirely is it's a basically a kind of a support craft, but it gets there ahead of the rest of the fleet, does what it has to do, and then the rest of the fleet can, like, you know, pound the ship to oblivion because it has no shields. That's kind of the idea. Now, of course, gunships are... A little bit more expensive than say fighters they're quite expensive when you even compare them to like frigates but they have the ability to you know get refueled etc so hopefully that'll pay off i'm always a bit duped when it comes to fighters because they do tend to die in droves especially in the campaign it's going to be a little bit fun anyway we've talked for long enough let's get straight in battle campaign and we're just gonna go new game so we've got this entire campaign to make it through yeah. so here we go i've actually loaded up um my deployment that I had earlier, I made sure I do this off screen so you don't have to see me do the complicated orders. What we have is, I think you are the Mani class over here, then followed up by the Sig class, and then we've got over here, like really far kind of at the back, uh, the Liggy class. Now people will probably be like, why have you offset yourself? Why are you not in the center? And this is like a, a really like key trick that I use in this game quite a lot, is that by going to the edge, these two groups, one is going to get to us much faster, and then the other one. So basically, we're splitting their firepower in half. They have to hit us in waves, which means that we can focus our firepower on half the size of their fleet, and they only have half the firepower to come back at us with, and then we can fight the next wave. Uh, it really pays off because you can, you know, also, you know, regenerate shields and stuff, etc. Um, now, of course, you don't tend to get a gap, it takes your time to kill them, but it does mean that you can only have to face half the firepower at once if you can kill them in time. We've also got over here, you know, uh, two Jazza Buff. Uh, we've also got, uh, what's that one? That's the Jazza Buff. And this one is the Isaac, which is a little bit of a point fence. And those are basically helping out our two uh, brawling capital ships. We also have, you know, an Isaac class over here helping out the carrier just in case it's needed. Uh, in terms of the Steen class cloaking craft, we've got, you know, five up here. The idea is that they will cloak and sort of move in right that. And at the, at the far back, I've also got our... Mass Wu frigates are going to die in droves. I've got ten of them. Uh, they are at the back because they are going to speed off. So I want them to, you know, be held back a little bit, but not too much. So they're probably going to speed off and get themselves massacred. Can't really do much about that. And then we have the Joker class missile uh, cruisers. Basically, I'd chuck them in the middle and be like, you know, you're just going to fire your missiles off. I'm perfectly happy with that. Go for it. We've also got three Fawcett class cruisers at the front. They're going to do what they do. I've put them in the middle to sandwich them between the Dreadnoughts because I kind of don't want them to be murdered. Like, because if they're, if they're the front target, the Dreadnoughts can take a bit more pounding. Hopefully this will work. So there's nothing for me to really do other than control the camera in the game. If you're not familiar with gratuitous space battles, you have no real control over the craft. The idea is that you just watch the carnage unfold after you've set this up. So we've set this up. I've kind of got everyone, by the way, on a cautious order, which is if they're damaged, go back. Retreat. Because I don't want people dying. I don't want people doing that little bit extra damage and dying. Because that means we don't get them in the next mission. By the way, I've also got four loads of gunships and a load of fighters. The fighters are all told to go and defend, escort, etc. Because they don't want the fighters flying off and getting themselves murdered. And the gunships, I think all of them are ordered to be around the... Mani class. Basically, the gunships are told to escort the Mani class because I don't want them flying off and getting themselves murdered. But, like, at really long range. So, like, 600 units around the Mani class. So, hopefully, they should destroy enemy shields before the Mani class gets there, or while well, the Mani class is just getting there, and then the Mani class, like, finishes them off, in theory. Let's fight this. Caching ship graphics. Doo doo doo. By the way, you will see my horrific design for my fleet. It was kind of, uh, like, you know, I went for the colors of the Elysian Empire, which is sort of a, a white and a blue. But the problem is, there's a lot of white, and I tend to keep the white to a minimum. Enemy so, they look horrific. Ahead. Yep. Targeting support beams activating. Not as bad as I expected. Nope, nope, yep, definitely, yep. Possibly worse than I expected. Pretty awful. Oh, so here we go. Here are the targeting support beams, like, uh... Like improving their you know ability to hit targets, working just as intended. I wish I could zoom out a little bit more. I want to be able to see like the entire battlefield right now. I mean, you know, the dreadnoughts are pretty large. So there we go. The mass woos are moving in again, getting themselves murdered, horrifically. Lasers are us. 
I'm your wingman! Okay, so here we go. Their fighters are coming in. This is exactly what I was hoping to not happen with my fighters. <laughs> Look at the sniper beams trying to hit a fighter. They're kind of anti-capital ship weapons, so... That ah, first kill is ours, although it's a fighter, but... Hmm... Fine. You can see that some of our uh, ships have cloaked here. If they want to attack this side, I'm perfectly happy for that. And here we go. Are these our gunships, or...? Why did they all die? Oh, there must be missiles. Why did all the missiles suddenly die? I don't know. Anyway, at least their fighters are getting murdered quite nicely. I'm happy about that. We've got 100% of our guys. I don't think we've lost anyone, but they're, they're actually losing, you know, 6% of their fleet. Right, how are we doing over here? Okay, so those are incoming missiles, and they've missed us because of the RTS Scrambler. Ooh, ooh, ooh! They're firing missiles! Okay, so these guys have got a lot of missiles. Shoe resistance too high. Oh god, we need to, like, open up with something that can, like, defeat their shields. Hit them with the plasma. There we go. Better. Enemy system scrambled. Oh yeah, shield disruptor got this guy. Oh, missiles, come on! I think we've got a couple in there. Yeah, that's it. First capital ship kill. I mean, what is it? Is it a... Frigate, it's not really a capital ship, but... First, like, non-fighter kill. We still haven't lost anyone, not even a fighter. You see all our gunships, by the way, around here. That Mass Wu is going to get murdered. By the way, keeping moving is actually being really beneficial. Like, it's actually dodging out the way a lot of these missiles just by keep moving. There is actually an order, by the way, if you're wondering, Gratuitous Space Battles called, um, Keep Moving, which tells Craft to never stop moving. It's, ar it's got no shield, but its armor's doing a pretty good job of, uh, making sure that it doesn't actually get injured by anything. What are these gunships? Ooh. They're getting killed. Warning. Ship system scrambled. Oh no! They scrambled the, uh, the frigate, the Mass Wu. <laughs> Oh, hello, this is their dreadnought. Mass Wu's uh, probably shouldn't fight that thing. They're using a lot of missiles. Which are missing us because of our speed. Really helpful that Mass Wu's just keep moving. Um, what are you? This cruiser. We're taking out your shield slowly, but they've got like a... I think it's a shield support beam. Like, look at that shield. It's recharging really quick. I think it's the beam. How's this going over here? Their second fleet's getting here, and the Mass Wu's are just kind of... Uh, I guess they're kind of an ablative shield for the rest of my fleet. Oi! No scrambling my dreadnoughts! That's annoying. Stop it. I need my dreadnought back. It's the only thing that's really defeating their shields. Oh god. What was that? Oh, that was the pulse thingy. I think that like detonates all missiles that come nearby. Um, yeah, Mass Wu's probably dead. Oh, they're using... There's scrambling missiles. They're just spamming scrambling missiles at us. Okay, where's our other dreadnought? Still in the back. Mm, they're trying to take us out with their point defense. Shoe resistance is still too high. Oh, God, no. Look at this one. No. The man is getting owned. Look at that. Oh, God, it's actually taking hull damage now. This would be a terrible loss for us early on. Warning. Ship system scrambled. Hopefully it'll turn around and start running home. We are taking radiation damage. Yeah. I mean these guys are tough. Warning. Ship system scrambled. We need to bring more like firepower to bear. Like oh, there we go, we're doing decent shield damage now. We are taking radiation damage. Oh no, this guy's still really tough. A little bit of damage here and there, but their shield resistance is really high. Oh, they've tracked at us. We are taking radiation damage. I think if I was to redo this, I would go for more like shield penetrating weapons, because right now their shields are they're just ignoring us, most of them. We are taking radiation damage. Right, come on, we've got our shields down to 30, 20. The main is gonna get destroyed. Warning. Ship system scrambled. 
Come on, take that shield out. Yeah, shield's out, right. Now, kill, 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 murder. We are taking radiation damage. Like, look at that amount of damage we're doing now their shields are down. Enemy systems oh, the man is at 10. 9. 8. Ship systems we have to kill them first. Yes! We avenged you early. Seven. I, I would be like hoping that they'd pull out in time, but they're not gonna, not a seven percent. That's a dreadnought as well? Ooh, it's a lot smaller dreadnought. Now the missile spam really helps now these cruisers are in missile range. Come on. Murder kill. Murder kill. Oh god, do I dare to hope? Do I dare to hope that the many might survive? We've lost some woos. You can see some of the woos just sort of exploded there. Mm. No! Stop scrambling me! Kill any of these guys yet? I think we maybe need to close to a closer range in future. Maybe I'll uh, alter the orders to tell them to get a little bit closer. And there we go. We've got a, uh, a woo class is actually withdrawing because it's taking a bit too much damage. Just kill this guy. He's supporting that one. Yeah, now look at the, the anti-like uh, missile, like, you know, weapons and scanners and whatever are actually doing a really good job of making sure the Mayonnaise survives a little bit longer. I'm still dubious if it will, like, there's a lot of missiles incoming. But it's the same scent. Like, if we bring up the Mayonnaise diagram, actually, can we do that? Yeah, look, look at all that. What have we got that's still alive? A little bit of the fusion core... Um, a little bit of one engine. Enemy system scrambled. Come on, kill it. Yeah, we killed that one, which was, I think that's a support one. Targeting support beams activated. Missiles. Spam the missiles. Yes. Enemy system scrambled. Oh, the poor Galactic Maniac! It's gonna get... Activated. It's gonna get really hurt. Like, I think it's shield, its cloak really helps at the moment, but it's... <sighs> no one's even, like, hurt this cruiser yet. At least we're getting rid of this one. Enemy system scrambled. Ouch. Warning. Its shield resistance is too high. We can't really do anything against it. I think we're gonna have to, like, basically get everyone to move up and basically pin it in the corner. And then just hit it over and over again until it dies. We're certainly lacking the firepower, and I think that's because we're just not moving up close enough with a lot of our craft. Enemy systems. Like, they're not bringing a lot of their weapons to bear. An enemy cruiser has been obliterated. Oh yeah, we didn't need to kill that guy! Oh yeah! And I got Oil Baron, Master of Missiles, and Master of Shields. I think that's because they've only just added achievements, or they have since I played it. Victory's ours, and victory by blowing a huge round of stuff into pieces, which is the very best kind. Few statistics. Most damage done was the 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 basic pulse cannon. Huh. Okay. Least damage done, the shield disrupted bomb. Well, that's kind of obvious considering it doesn't do any damage. Most damage done, ship was the Steen class cloaking cruiser. Least damage done was the Patuti anti shield. Well, of course it was the Patuti anti shield gunship. It doesn't do any damage. Best versus shield was the plasma launcher. Best versus arm was the beam laser. Best versus hull was the pulse cannon. Now I think we maybe need more heavy pulse uh, plasma launchers in the like the group. Their shields were tough. Maybe the next group won't have many shields though, so we'll have to see how they fare out. Best versus shields was the steam class cloak cruiser. Best versus arm was steam class cloak cruiser. Best versus hull was oh my god, we need more steam classes then. Wow, despicable enemy fleet. Whatever.
and I've crashed. Uh, okay. <laughs>